when I see a blog post written by a Christian that's titled Five Ways to Be a Better Atheist, odds are pretty good that I found something diatribe worthy. And honestly, even before I read the fucking thing, I could have summarized the five points the author was going to make in a single sentence. Take our ideas seriously and stop calling us stupid. And that was pretty much what I got. Now this one comes to us from theologist and person with douchey first initial thing going on, C. Michael Patton, and it's a masterclass in making empty points. So he starts off by pulling the theist's bullshit dismissal flavor of the month about how atheists refuse to believe in God for emotional rather than rational reasons, because I guess if they just said, I know you are, but what am I, it would te seem too bullshitty even to them. And then he breaks it down into his five points. The, the first is about how atheists should stop saying that there's no evidence for God. And, and you know what, in, in like a, a technical debatey sort of way, he's probably right on that one. If you're in a formal debate... You should probably avoid saying that because in a technical Bayesian sort of way, it's incorrect. You, know, you should instead say there's no valid evidence for God or there's no compelling evidence for God or there's no evidence that should convince a retarded goat or some qualification like that. That being said, outside of a formal debate, I will make the hell out of this point. You know, let the learned theist point out that in an ever so slight sense, there is evidence for God because technically as soon as I point to something call it evidence, that makes it evidence. Because what they're actually saying here is that if I claim that unicorns shit cabbages, then cabbages suddenly become evidence of unicorns. Let somebody open an informal water cooler type debate up by conceding that that's what they mean when they say evidence and see how many people they sway. Now, he then goes on to bitch about the flying spaghetti monster, and this is a really popular whipping boy for theists and a lot of atheists as well. And I think most of the criticisms largely missed the point of the whole FSM analogy. So his argument is kind of bizarre. It, it relies on breaking the God argument into two parts. And according to C, the FSM thing skips over the f whole first half of the argument. So he says part one of the debate is, is there a prime mover? And part two is what properties would the prime mover have? And the whole flying spaghetti monster thing skips over the prime mover thing. But this is such incredible horseshit that he should get kicked out of the theologist's club for saying it. Whether or not there is a prime mover is not a theistic question. That's a deistic question. It's a question that one can't argue against in the same way that one can't argue against hard solipsism because it's untestable and has no consequences. So it might be an occasionally useful thought experiment, but it's completely academic. The, but the very term theist, though, suggests more than a prime mover. It definitionally includes an act of God that interferes with the world. So he's wrong about his own thing. Now, what's so amazing here, by the way, is that his FSM hate comes right on the heels of his evidence argument, and he still fails to engage with the point that the noodly appendages have the exact same amount of evidence supporting them as your stupid fucking God concept. Now, the third point is even stupider, as it basically says, just admit you're wrong and that we're right. Okay, he phrases it as, admit the weaknesses of your position, but the weaknesses that he offers up are just like general holes in human knowledge. For example, he urges us to concede that atheism doesn't have a strong explanation for morals or where the universe comes from, but at the same time, he fails to concede that his own worldview settled on the stupidest possible answer to those questions and then just moved on as though they were answered. That's not a strength, that's ignorance. The weaknesses of the atheistic position are the same as the weaknesses of just all the stuff that we know. Yes, there are unanswered questions, but those questions are no less unanswered when you ignore them by invoking magic. Now, in, in point four, he ramps up the stupid even more, if you can believe that, by encouraging atheists to be more open-minded. Yes, he has literally descended into food babe levels of argumentation here. Be more open-minded. Isn't that just a calling card of everybody who's ever tried to convince anyone of something that they had no evidence for? And you know what? I'll dismiss that argument with a paraphrase of Walter Kochnig and point out that the most open minds are the empty ones. Now, he finally, he goes on to his last point, which is this desperate attempt to pretend that we have the burden of proof. That somehow God existing is the null hypothesis, and we have to now defend the antithesis despite the fact that that's logically impossible. You know, in, in a sense, I almost agreed with part of how he phrased the first sentence of this one, but it went off the rails before I could muster a single nod. He actually takes atheists to task for pointing out that they're exactly as much of atheists as they are a leprechaunists by pointing out that not very many people believe in leprechauns. Now, look, the fact that the dude didn't short out his keyboard drooling on it means he's not dumb enough to think that that's a logical argument. He's actually saying that the number of people who believe something somehow shifts the burden of proof to the minority. 
He then resurrects the same bullshit he trotted out in the point number three about how atheists can't deny God until they definitively explain all the mysteries of science. So in his mind, atheists can't reasonably deny the fact that a dead Jew grants wishes to the little people that drive our brains until we've explained the existence of matter, morality, the questions of free will, and solved the hard problem of consciousness. And, of course, he makes no concession that saying the flying spaghetti monster did it is exactly as explanatory as his answer. So, yeah, take our ideas seriously and stop calling us stupid in 2,000 words. And to be honest, by itself, it's not even worth bringing this up, right? A Christian theologian makes really stupid arguments against atheism, hold the presses. But I thought it was worth diatribing about because when I saw it on Facebook, it had been shared by a couple of prominent atheists who urged their Facebook followers to give it a read with claims that these were actually pretty good points. Now, look, I don't want to call anybody out by name here, but I think this represents a very real problem in the atheist movement because it's the justification that one group of atheists always use when they're trying to tell another group of atheists that they're not believing in God wrong. You know, when you come down to it, all the arguments for God are really, really stupid. You know, they fool a lot of smart people, obviously, because you know being intelligent isn't going to insulate you from getting a stupid answer when you're working with insufficient information. And a lot of prominent voices in the atheist movement came out of religion at a late age, which means they have to, A, admit that they were snowed by some really stupid arguments for a really long time, or B, pretend that those arguments that fooled them are better than they really are. So you wind up with a lot of people, a lot of movement atheists out there saying, no, it, it really is an interesting question, and there are convincing arguments on both sides, and we should be nicer and not call those arguments stupid. And if that's the tack that you personally want to take, fine. But I'm going to take the more intellectually honest one, even if it means I piss more people off along the way. And if you want to call me out on it, you can call me out for being an asshole. You can call me out for being callous. Hell, you can even call me out for being counterproductive, but you can't call me out for being wrong.